immunosuppressor genes are the second group of cancer genes. The cancer genes can be grouped as, uh, or the cancer genes, uh, we can say there are two main groups of cancer genes. The first group is oncogenes, group of onco the uh, in the first group there are oncogenes. And in the second group, we will see today the tumor suppressor genes. And also we can make, <clears throat> we can uh, think, we can uh, put another group here. We can add another group, which are, which is metastasis genes. So if we say there are two groups of cancer genes, those are oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, or we can say there are three groups of cancer genes, then uh, those are oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes, and metastasis genes. So we have already learned about the oncogenes. So you know that uh, we split the oncogenes uh, in two classes. Uh, the first one was viral oncogenes, and the second group was um, cellular oncogenes. You should remember these. Now, today we will look at tumor suppressor genes. So as you can understand from their name, from the uh, name tumor suppressor genes, those are, uh, let me take the laser pointers. So tumor suppressor genes are the genes which are responsible to prevent the cells to go to uh, tumor genesis or to proceed on tumor genesis uh, steps. So these are the genes that prevent carcinogenesis. Uh, their existence uh, were predicted before they were found. And then uh, after a couple of years, uh, uh, the first tumor suppressor genes were, uh, the first uh, tumor suppressor gene, which is uh, RB was found. Now, I'm gonna start with the basics of uh, tumor suppressor genes because uh, otherwise I will uh, forget uh, to say a lot of things about these. Now, first of all, these are, as you can understand from their names, uh, the genes which are responsible for preventing the cells to proceed on tumor genesis steps. There are a lot of different kinds of tumor suppressors. There are a lot of different kinds of tumor, tumor suppressors. And we can first group the tumor suppressor genes. We can uh, first think uh, two groups of tumor suppressor genes. The first one is, <clears throat> let me take uh, the whiteboard here. The first group of tumor suppressors can be said, uh, gatekeepers there's only one key here gatekeepers and the second one caretakers so the first uh, thing i can say about the tumor suppressor genes is this so uh, two main groups of tumor suppressors one of them gatekeepers, the second one, uh, caretakers. Now, there are a lot of differences of tumor suppressor genes because they work, the, uh, they work in opposite way uh, from the oncogenes. So oncogenes drive the cells to go carcinogenesis, but tumor suppressor genes prevent the cell from carcinogenesis. Now, if you remember the oncogenes, uh, mutant alleles of oncogenes were active alleles, constitutively active alleles. So they were producing uh, constitutively, constitutively uh, active or non-controllable proteins, non-controllable oncoproteins. <laughs> The situation is opposite for tumor suppressor genes. So for carcinogenesis, even though the oncogenes require their activating mutations, their, activa uh, their alleles with activating mutations, 
the the mutations in tumor suppressor genes which cause car, car, which cause cancer or tumor uh, tumor genesis are inactivating mutations or suppressing mutations so if the oncogenes are overexpressed they cause carcinogenesis but if the expression of tumor suppressors are prevented or uh, they are underexpressed, then they cause or they may cause tumorigenesis. Uh, in here, at this point, we can say two, group of, two groups of mutations, if I didn't say so far. Uh, gain of function mutations. And two, loss of function. So we see the gain of function mutations in oncogenes. And loss of function mutations in tumorigenic alleles of tumor suppressor genes. <clears throat> All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, at this point, we have to notice something else. So, what is the difference between these gain of function and loss of function mutations? So, if you can remember the mutations in the examples of uh, oncogenes, those mutations were collected at special points. So if the oncogene is large protein encoding hundreds of even hundreds of uh, amino acids, a large peptide which spans for hundreds of amino acids, only three or four, only uh, two, three or four positions were important for carcinogenesis. So only the alleles carrying at very special positions. For example, if you can remember, the RAS oncogene, uh, 12, 13, and 16 amino acid, uh, 61st amino acid positions. So amino acid positions uh, 12, 13, and 60, uh, 61, sorry. So if mutation hits these positions of, an onco uh, of a, a RAS gene, it can be KRAS and RAS or HRAS, all of them uh, carries mutations at this point. So if the mutation changes one of these amino acids, that converts the proto-oncogene RAS to oncogenic RAS, the oncogenic, oncogenic allele of RAS. Uh, but none of the other positions uh, show any frequent mutation in tumors. Because when we detect, when we try to detect the mutations causing tumors or cancer, what we do is we take two DNA samples from the patients. So let's say there is a patient, uh, uh, there is a uh, patient uh, who has cancer or who has a tumor. Uh, to understand what's going on in the genome of uh, his or her, uh, in the tumor of the patient's tumor, uh, what's going on in the genome of the patient's tumor cells, we have to compare the genes uh, of the tumor cells with the genes of normal cells of the same patient. Okay, there is one patient. The patient has a tumor. Uh, we have to extract the DNA from the tumor, but also we have to extract the same patient's DNA from the patient's blood or any other normal tissue. Okay? okay. Because the difference is between the DNA of tumor cells and normal cells. Because <coughs> tumor cells became tumor cells because of uh, the mutations they have. So mutations uh, happen, uh, mutations occurred during the time, by the time, causes the cells to be converted to tumor cells. 
So that if we compare the tumor cells DNA with the normal cells DNA, we will see some mutant alleles only in the tumor cells. But we will see the normal alleles of the same genes in the normal cells. So this shows us the phenomena of somatic mutations. Again, let's say, again, uh, let me say, uh, say mutations. The mutations can be germline or they can be somatic. Germline mutations are the mutations uh, we know so far. So uh, those are, uh, we, can, uh, we can make the classical mutation description for that. So germline mutations are the mutations or uh, mutant alleles that we inherit from our parents. Those are germline. But somatic mutations happen or somatic muta mutagenesis occur during mitosis. So once the, uh, let's go to the beginning very beginning, the zygote. So once the zygote is, uh, once the egg is first fertilized by sperm, then it's gonna go to millions of mitose divisions, mito mitotic cell divisions. So during those cell divisions, uh, during it can be during embryogenesis or uh, it can be uh, after adulthood. Because uh, even after we became adults, a lot of our cells in our body, a lot of the cells in our body uh, still has to divide. For example, the simplest example for this is epithelial cells. So they have to divide because they have to remove the epithelial tissue to get rid of the damaged cells, damaged cells. So during those mitotic divisions, uh, you know, uh, the DNA polymerase has uh, the DNA polymerase uh, has an error has an error rate, so it can make it can make mistakes, and most of the mutations are caused by these uh, mistakes done by DNA polymerase. If we add any factors like mutagens, those mutagens increase the rate of uh, errors of the enzyme called DNA polymerase, and they increase the mutation rate. So if the mutation is not inherited from the parents and it starts, it happens during mitotic cell division in the somatic cells, then we call those mutations somatic mutations. So now we have two kinds of mutations in terms of inheritance, inheritance. If the mutation is inherited, which means that mutant allele was already exist in the sperm or egg before uh, fertilization, that means we are copying that mutant allele from our father or mother. Then that's a germline mutation. But we took totally normal cells, total normal genes or normal DNA, normal alleles uh, from our parents. But during our lifetimes, we had a mutation in our somatic cells during mitosis. Those somatic cells can be uh, our uh, epithelial cells, uh, our epidermis cells, or uh, they can be our intestinal cells or uh, epithelial cells uh, in our lung anywhere, or anywhere else. So those are somatic cells and mutations we see in those somatic cells uh, are somatic mutations. The difference of somatic mutation is they are local. So if you see somatic mutation in the cells of an organ, you cannot detect the same mutation in the other cells, in the other cells of the uh, same person. But if the mutation or the mutant allele uh, is caused by a germline mutation, which is inherited, then you have to see the same mutation in every single cell of the organism. And that person or that organism will pass that mutant allele to his or her 
uh, offsprings too, because that's inherited. Uh, he or she will produce the gametes carrying that mutant allele too. Then it's a germline mutation, and that germline mutation is going to pass to the offsprings of the same person. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, in this picture, you can see an example uh, of a cancer caused by mutant allele of uh, a tumor suppressor gene, which is RB, pro, R, RB gene, retino, uh, retinoblastoma gene. So this is retinoblastoma. So this large structure, this large thing is a tumor. So this is a tumor which has developed from retinal cells and this is the normal retina. So it pushes the normal, normal retina away. This kind of cancer, retinoblastoma, is caused by mutant allele of a gene called, called RB, RB gene. So RB gene uh, is a tumor suppressor gene and there are germline mutations in this gene, in this gene. But also, uh, in the families which do not carry the germinal mutations, this disease can be seen as well. So, there are inherited forms and non-inherited forms of the same cancer type. Even though they both show the same phenotype or very similar phenotype, they both show the retinoblastoma uh, phenotype, there are clinical differences or, uh, let me say, and they are caused by the mutations on the same gene. So the germline mutations cause retinoblastoma in the uh, families, which exhibits a lot of people, a lot of members uh, showing the retinoblastoma uh, phenotype. But also, even if there is no uh, patients, no other patients in the family, we can detect uh, the patients with retinoblastoma. How does it happen? So that's possible with germline mutations and also with somatic mutations affecting this gene, the retinoblastoma gene. Uh, then what is the difference? What kind of difference we see? Usually, if the mutation is inherited, if the disease is caused by a uh, germline mutation, then we see the disease as bilateral, so in both eyes. If we can detect the tumors in both eyes, then we say that's probably uh, inherited. That's caused by germline mutations. But uh, the sporadic, sporadic forms of retinoblastoma is caused by somatic mutations and it's seen only on one eye, only on one side. Şimdi uh, we look at the mutations of these patients. Most of them carry the mutant allele on uh, heterozygote form as heterozygote. So only one allele is uh, mutant. But during their lifetime, we see we, these people develop the same kind of disease, same kind of cancer, mostly, retinoblastoma. And we know that for, uh, tumor, uh, for tumor suppressor mutations to be effective, they have to be homozygote states. So mostly, not always, but mostly, the uh, on mostly only one mutant allele of tumor suppressor gene is not sufficient to make uh, to cause the disease phenotype. How does it happen? Why do these people have a higher risk of retinoblastoma, even though they are heterozygote? So at the cell at the cellular level, it must be uh, they are heterozygote. But when, we, when you look the, the, at their phenotypes, they show, they exhibit the disease, disease phenotype. How does it happen? Now, in these patients who inherit one mutant allele from their, uh, from their families, from their parents, 
they have a normal allele too because of uh, the homologous chromosome. This normal allele uh, take uh, this normal allele help the patient to stay safe uh, for a long time for a, uh, or uh, we can call that time short uh, for a few years but after uh, a few years uh, these people show the disease phenotype and the disease phenotype appears earlier uh, in a, appears in an earlier age with the people who carries the mutant allele in heterozygote states. How does it happen? Now, let's say there are two people. One of them has sporadic retinoblastoma. The other one has inherited. Now, for, spor for the sporadic retinoblastoma to develop, this person must have a mutation, a somatic mutation, so that mutation hits the first allele. Now this person has one mutant allele, but it but that person still have one normal allele. So this normal allele keeps him self keeps him healthy. But when the second allele gets mutated, when another mutation hits the second allele, then uh, retinoblastoma starts in, in this patient. But for the other patient who, al who has already inherited one, of, one uh, mutant copy of retinoblastoma gene from his parents, <coughs> has only one normal allele to protect him. So once a mutation hits the retinoblastoma gene, that gene is only one normal copy of uh, retinoblastoma RB gene. So uh, the first mutation to hit the RB gene uh, causes formation of cancer in this patient. So these patients have higher risk of retinoblastoma. And we see the disease with these people bilaterally in both eyes. Okay? Buraya kadar tamam.